Although the quality of the lake has deteriorated, there's still plenty of food for the alligators, and there have been no new prey species introduced into the lake. So if the alligator's diet is to blame, what are they eating? The only way to find out is to find a live alligator and pump its stomach. A reinforced plastic pipe is clamped between the animal's jaws. Yep. Then taped into place. It might be an uncomfortable procedure, but there's no long-term damage to the alligator. Perfect. We start to feel full, Cameron. Just give him some pushes. Fresh water is pumped into the gut while pressure is applied to the belly. The contents of the stomach come gushing out. Good job. Here we go. For seven months, alligators are captured and all have their stomach contents examined. What the scientists find in test after test are the remains of one particular species, a fish called gizzard shad. Honeyfield is not surprised. From my previous work, I knew that gizzard shad were very high in, in thymonase. Thymonase is an enzyme that destroys thymine. The pieces of the puzzle are coming together. The alligators have a thiamine deficiency. The shad are known to contain the enzyme thiaminase, which destroys thiamine. Surely the shad must be the killer. Shad has long been a part of the alligator's diet. So why is thiaminase only affecting them now? Gizzard shad numbers increased greatly, and the other species were much lower, and so the biodiversity was less. And therefore, the alligators did not have the opportunity of getting their vitamin pill in the form of these other animals. Usually, alligators get enough thiamine from their other foods. Just as with Honeyfield's fish, it doesn't matter if they ingest thiaminase from the shad, as long as they get regular thiamine to bring them back to normal. The problems occur when they eat gizzard shad almost exclusively. The changing quality of the lake has brought about a massive increase in the shad and a decline in other prey species, such as bass and bluegill. You know, a fish that survives very well on eating bottom sediments or algae is shad. You know, the shad population exploded. That fish is found in highly nutrient-rich lakes. It really likes those kind of conditions. The more shad there are, the worse the situation will get. The authorities take a radical step. They extract the shad from all 9,000 acres of Lake Griffin. And so we had this project to remove gizzard shad. Well, when we started harvesting the gizzard shad out of Lake Griffin, and the water quality was improving in Lake Griffin, the alligator stopped dying. It took six years of intensive investigation by a team of scientists from 13 different agencies to arrive at this solution. But the shad are not solely responsible for this crime. The deaths were caused by each and every one of the suspects. First, people and muck farms colonized the region. Bit by bit, drop by drop. 
their chemical concoctions seeped into the lake to start a chain reaction. This paved the way for a toxic alien invader, an algal bloom which almost suffocated the lake. It choked all the submerged plants and with time caused huge numbers of fish to die out. But one species found the new rancid conditions ideal. The gizzard shad ran amok in the now turbid and stinking waters of Lake Griffin. A chain of events triggered inadvertently by people, agriculture, and development ended in the death of hundreds of alligators and the demise of a lake. Gizzard Chad, the weapon, but definitely not the killer.